Hi, my name is Rochelle Gibson with Prenda. We establish micro schools in informal settings like homes. Um, we're primarily in Arizona right now and expanding sort of all over the United States and into some other countries. And uh, so we establish um, these, these micro schools and they are five to 10 students, ideally in a three grade range. Sometimes the range is a little bit bigger than that. And just want to tell you about this. And so I've brought three guides along with me. I'm going to facilitate a panel of three guides that have been guiding us last year. And I'd like to introduce them. We're going to start with Tom. Hi, my name is Tom Bogle. I am a former uh, high school economics and entrepreneurship teacher. I taught in the traditional public setting for just about 10 years. I've also been a homeschooling father for the last seven years as well. Uh, about a year ago, I became a Prenda micro school guide for a third through eighth grade class, and I have loved every bit of it so far. Thanks, Tom. Julie, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? My name is Julie Palmer. I live in Flagstaff, and I was, um, before I became a guide for Prenda, I was in the traditional public school system. Every year when I sent my kids to school, I always thought that I needed to homeschool and wanted to homeschool them, but didn't know the resources or didn't know how to do it. So I never did. And then um, I, so a little bit of background, I do have my degree in elementary education. And so, but I wanted to stay close to my kids and be available to my kids. And so I made sure that I, I was by just substituting through the school systems wherever I was. And, but those short-term jobs turn into long-term jobs. And so I was essentially working full-time jobs and not as available with my, to my children as I wanted to be. And so when Prinda came, came around the corner and showed up, um, after some soul searching, we jumped. And um, I was a guide this last semester or this last year for third through eighth graders. And it's been a great experience. My daughter was in my class and it's been fabulous. Awesome, thank you. And Ashley? Yeah, so I live in Mesa and I've always wanted to, I'm a stay at home mom and I've always wanted to homeschool my children, but just never feeling very confident or along with Julie, just having the resources available to me. And so when Prenda came along, I was saying that this was just the right fit for my kids and it, it has been amazing. And I became a K through two guide and have been doing that for a semester and I love it. It's been such a great experience, both for my children as well as for me and I've definitely grown. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so we're gonna jump right into some questions. We're gonna go kind of rapid fire here. So I'm gonna start with a question for Tom. I asked Tom to tell us how on the spectrum of homeschool to traditional school, where does Prenda fall in that, like in that conversation? Right, so I think for you know, for people who kind of work in education, we know that spectrum is a little bit bigger and a little bit more diverse, but just to simplify this, uh, yeah, we have traditional public schooling over here and uh, we're homeschooling over on one side. And when I first jumped on board with Prenda, I thought it was a nice middle ground. And, and that's the way it's, it's easy to explain it to people that way, that it's, it's a middle ground where we do provide some structure and so, some support and some training but at the same time, the kids have flexibility and freedom in their learning. Uh, but the more I, deep, I jump in more deeply into the Prenda learning model, I see that it's not so much a point in between those two systems as much as it is like a bridge across that, that gap. It fills that gap entirely with the flexibility that you have. Uh, and and I've, I, just, I really love that. So it's for someone like myself who comes from really this kind of radical unschooling philosophy. Uh, but then my friends who have never questioned sending their children to the traditional public school, Prenda is equally as appealing for, for both of us. And that I think is a pretty amazing feat. That's amazing. Um, Julie, um, we're gonna talk a little bit about, I'm gonna ask each of you why you decided to become a guide. So Julie, you touched on this a little bit. Is there anything you wanna to add to that? Uh, yeah. Uh, I think the main reason why I wanted to become a guide, um, there was a couple of reasons. One was for my daughter. My daughter was going into eighth grade. I was never happy with the, the school system, especially junior high. She didn't have a solid foundation or solid friend base at school anyways. And so when she, um, when we conversed about it and she was ready to make a change also, cause she wanted to be homeschooled forever. And then all of a sudden this, the last year before I took her out, she was like, well, I think I'm going to be okay. And 
anyways, after some conversations, she was like, yeah, I think I want to do this. And the time, um, being able to have my time back, being able to work with students on a more personal level. I felt like when I was subbing for so long, I would get so frustrated with, I can let these kids while they're in my classroom, but then they go home to whatever they go home to. And it's redoing everything that we did the next day. It's like, you know, Groundhog Day, doing the same thing over and over again, but having such a hard time reaching them when, um, when they were just going back to stuff at home and just stuff. And so I felt like being a guide with 10 students was such an intimate setting, being able to connect with each of those students on a one-on-one -on -one level, um, as well as group levels was just kind of what I was looking for. And so it just kind of worked out. Awesome, thank you. Ashley, will you share with us, um, actually let's go Tom next. Tom, will you share with us why you decided to become a guide? Sure. Yeah. So I, like I said, I'd been a high school teacher and I loved my job. I loved working with kids, but I really found that I had kind of a pedagogical and philosophical falling out with the institution where I worked. And I saw several of my peers doing the same thing that they didn't feel like there was a home for them in the, the public schooling system anymore. And too many of them were just leaving education as a whole not looking for other alternatives that were out there. And for me, I saw uh, Prenda, I, I was looking at other alternatives that were out there. Um, but I, I had kind of a, a, a John Taylor Gatto moment where I had, I realized, you know, I, I didn't want to hurt kids for a living anymore. And that's what I was doing in, in that kind of school system. Um, and so I honestly thought that I would never be able to work in an instructional environment again until I really explored the, the Prenda micro school learning model. And for the first time, I, I thought, you know, I, I can be confident in a learning model that gives kids autonomy, helps them identify their own purpose. That, that's something I feel confident in, in and something that I would love to do. And it has fully lived up to the expectations that I had. I, I you know, I'm not anticipating a philosophical falling out anytime soon. Plus the timing was perfect for my family and my kids. So I was able to have two of my own children in my micro school working with other kids in the neighborhood and it was just fantastic. Awesome, thank you, Tom. Ashley, will you share with us why you decided to become a guide? Yeah, so I actually found out about Prenda from a friend and she told me, hey, you should guide the younger kids and I'll do the older kids and we can swap kids. And um, it actually was very scary. Um, this is definitely out of my comfort zone. Um, but the community support that I received, both from her and just Prenda in general and having um, that sense of community, I never felt alone. And so it definitely made it a lot more easier to, to do. And so I wanted to be a guide for my younger kids to kind of get them started. And I also loved that how the countenance change for my kids, just loving learning versus loving school, if that makes any sense. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Del totally does. It's interesting. So the rest of what we're going to talk about sort of we've, ref we've framed this with, I'm going to ask these guys questions and they, and their responses, they've thought through, sort of experiences they've had as guides in the classroom that they can share with us. So I'm gonna start with Tom and ask, what about being a Prenda guide is different from your experience of being a teacher? Wait, you're muted, Tom. That, that's a, a great question. I, for me, it's very much a one-on-one, -on -one, a much more personal relationship. And you find yourself in situations where if you fully embody the, the Prenda learning philosophy, then you as the guide have just as much opportunity to learn from your students as, as they do. Not so much from you, but from your interaction, from their interactions with you. Um, <clears throat> so I had one great example, part of my Prenda micro school, we have a garden in the backyard at my home and I grew beets. I never liked beets. I don't know why we really grew them other than I thought, you know, maybe we could do a fun stamp project. You, you carve the beet, you stamp, it's, it's fun. And we did that. I, I had one, one young student who came into my class and, and part of his story will come up a little bit later as well. But he, 
loved that garden. He loved going outside and spending time in the garden because it wasn't sitting at a desk. And so he really wanted to go harvest some beets one day. And I said, listen, like, you can't just pull stuff out of the ground because you want to. You've got to wait until it's, it's ready, until you were going to do something with it, until we're going to eat it. And he said, well, let's eat the beets. <laughs> now, I don't like beets, but uh, one of our, our core values is that we dare greatly and we, uh, we try things out. So uh, the students looked up a recipe and we figured out how to do a quick steamed beets in the microwave and, and we did that and we tried it and, and they were fantastic. And it was all because one of my students challenged me to try something that I was not comfortable with, uh, that I, I didn't want to try. Um, and, and he pushed me to think beyond my own, my own comfort level. Uh, and they were so good, I incorporated them into my family dinner that night. So it was, it was a great learning opportunity. Uh, something that uh, I, I never had an experience quite, quite like that as, as a traditional teacher. That's awesome. Julie, the question I'm going to ask you is, how does the trend of learning model empowered learners? I love this question because I love the whole idea of empowering learners. That was another thing that drew me to Prinda because um, I wanted that for my daughter. If I couldn't have it for any of my other kids, I at least wanted it for her. Um, besides having the five core values that we can kind of grow upon throughout the year with our students and as a guide myself, I also thrived in learning more about those, the five core values that Prenda is based upon, which I think we're going to be talking about a little bit later. <laughs> but um, it makes me think of a story. When we're thinking about empowering learners, it makes me think of a story about um, caterpillars and, and butterflies. So when, you, when you, you probably all know that for a chrysalis, for a caterpillar to grow inside of the chrysalis or the caterpillar to become the butterfly inside the chrysalis, um, they have the chrysalis around them and they're growing inside and it's up to that butterfly to scratch their way and to claw their way and to work their way out of this chrysalis. Um, if we were to help that butterfly out, the butterfly would be crippled. It wouldn't have the strength that it needed to grow and to continue to, uh, to have a healthy life, um, the life of a butterfly. And so I think about that with our students. We aren't there to tell them everything. We aren't there to give them all the answers um, because that's just like that butterfly. They need to be able to come up with the answers on their own. And so um, as we guide our students in their micro schools, we're able to kind of stand back and take more of a backseat approach. And at first it was a little off-putting for me because I am a teacher. I want to, I want to be the facilitator of information and um, get those kudos, you know, when I get it right for them and teach them how to do something and, you know, whatever. But they, it's so exciting when you see these kids and these students become those empowered learners where they know that they can find the answer to anything that they want. And, um, and that's what I saw in my class continuously over and over and over is that if they didn't have an answer to something, they would find out, they would go to find out. And not very often did they come to me for those answers. They would go to a peer, they would go to the computer, they would go to um, themselves, whatever it was, it wasn't often to me. And so that's what I, that's what I really love about the printed learning model is how it empowers learners. Awesome. Thank you. I love that. So Ashley, I want to ask you a question. Your kids came from public school um, and had a very different experience in Prenda than they've been having. How do children integrate, integrate into the Prenda model coming from a public school setting? Yeah. So, I mean, there's that type. I know Tom mentioned a little bit about unschooling before, and there's definitely that unschooling feel of um, Prenda. I actually had a student that academically and on paper just did amazing, just rocked it. And so, but we had um, part of our create, we had imagination station and I would give them a prompt and I gave them recyclable items and resources for them to create something using that prompt. And the prompt was um, you're out exploring near a volcano and the volcano erupts and there's lava, create some lava boots. And this student was really struggling um, to figure out what to do and how to create that. And he would come up to me and ask, Miss Ashley, I'm not sure how to do this. What do I do? Well, what resources have you used? And that got him pondering. And then he'd go back and try again. 
And then he'd come again and say, I still don't get it. Well, have you, have you talked to anyone else? And he said no. And so he would, but basically I was giving him those, or guiding him, if you will, to initiate those little brain wheels. And in the long run, he ended up figuring it out. And he did great. And he decided to do a lava boat, which was awesome because he wasn't constrained to do an assignment and keep it as the lava boots. He decided he wanted to do a lava boat. And that was just awesome. And seeing that and getting the positive feedback from his peers, as well as me as a guide was amazing. And he, he was awesome. And so that was a turning point in his little Prenda journey. And it was awesome. It was all for the better. I love that. It's interesting. When you first told me that story, the, the thought, and I wrote it down because I really liked it. What happens in the world when kids can create without instructions? Just this idea of, cre of, of having this generation of children that can create without a map. Tom referred to like the Lego, <laughs> in the Lego movie when he's like, I don't have the instructions, you know? And, and we have so many kids that are like, I can't do this because I don't have the instructions. And, and just giving them permission to create from inside of themselves, inside their own brains is so powerful. So one of the things that I want to hit on just for people that aren't familiar with Prenda is like sort of what does a day in the life of a Prenda student look like? Our Prenda has three modes of learning. So I'm gonna have each of these um, guides talk about one. So we're gonna start with Julie. She's gonna tell us about Conquer. All right. Um, Conquer in my class is the beginning of the day, but isn't always the beginning of every um, micro school's day. We, uh, before my students came in, we had a community circle first. And that community circle, we would have um, team building games. We would have inspirational videos. We would have um, just get to know you things, whatever, whatever we kind of felt like doing before getting school started. It was just our time to connect, our time to kind of, um, kind of set the tone for the day on a positive note. And then after we would have our community circle, the students would get their computers and we would start, we would log all of our, our goals. And we'd go around and each student would log their goal in math, in language, in um, reading, and in writing. And then there's extra goals that they can also log at the end. So then the students would go, we'd, we'd, everybody would log their goals and then they would get to it and they would go to work. Um, they had anywhere from, um, my class normally did 120 minutes during that time, but there's some classes that would do 90 minutes. It just depends on the micro school. But my, my students generally wanted to take up the whole 120 minutes to do their conquer time. We'd have some soft music playing. I allowed them to use the earbuds if they wanted to, um, just to have that, it was just their learning time. Their learning time to do it individually. Each student is in their own place. So I had sixth graders who were sometimes starting at third grade math to get through, um, to take care of all the gaps that maybe they had in another setting, school setting that they were in. Um, we also had sixth graders who were doing eighth grade math. Um, also, Lexia, kids don't have to be confined to just a certain amount of Lexia units a day. They can go as far as they want to go. Uh, that's a really cool thing about the Prenda model is that our students start where they are and they just, they can go. They can just go as fast as they want to go or as slow as they want to go, really. And um, is there anything I'm forgetting about Conquer that I needed to tell, tell you? Julie, talk a little bit about the, the, the sort of shift in their mindset around their goal setting that happened over the course of a year. Oh, so in the beginning, of course, it's just getting to know programs, if, if it's, especially if it's a new, Prenda was new to all of my students. It's none of them have ever had ever experienced it before. But they would start with just really small goals. Um, I'm just going to do like 1% in math, maybe. And I might be just do maybe like two or three units in Lexia or whatever, just very small, little, simple um, goals, but as time went on and they saw that all that they could conquer, their goals became more ambitious. And those were their goals, not my goals. Um, 100%, those were things that they decided that they decided they would like to do, and then they would, would go for it. There was still frustration involved a lot of times, but another cool thing that we did was we would celebrate successes that they would have. Um, they would get, so anytime they would get 10% of um, Khan Academy, they would just color it on a grid and we would cheer. Everybody had their own little cheer. And that was actually a great breakup from the day. And nobody really cared that so-and-so was at 50% and so-and-so was at 20%. It didn't really matter. All they cared about was they were getting that 10% and we got to cheer for each other. 
And that was a great way for us to build that community and that team within our micro school. It was really great. Thank you, Julie. I love that. So the next part of the day, I'm going to have Tom talk about, um, it's collaborate. Yeah, so with uh, our Conquer Learning Mode, it's very individualized, helping kids uh, learn where they are at, at reach their own uh, learning frontiers. With Collaborate, it's inclusive. It brings all of the students together to do an activity that we have uh, in common. We're all doing it together at the same time. The most important part for me about Collaborate is that it's student-led. So instead of it being me, the, the guide in the room, telling the students what to do or telling them you know, what, what they were supposed to do or say or think or whatever, uh, which honestly was frustrating for me at times, but I appreciated it uh, seeing the results. Uh, but the, the students would get together and we would do a number of collaborative activities. Sometimes we would do a Socratic discussion. We would do debate in my classroom, which was challenging but fun. We would do math puzzles together, do science projects. Uh, we would do a deep dive exploration into historical events or figures. Uh, we would play games, we'd play learning games together and it was just fantastic. Uh, and what I really appreciated about Collaborate is that it didn't matter that the students in my class ranged from third grade all the way up to eighth grade. During that time period, everyone had something that they could contribute and everyone appreciated and validated each other's contributions. No matter how, how nominal of a contribution it was, it was appreciated. And so it was a, a great way for these kids to build leadership uh, skills, to learn social communication skills, and, and even for the students that lead the activities, understanding the importance of communicating expectations and then meeting their end of, of those expectations that they've put forth. Like these are the kind of soft skill, you know, soft skills that uh, they will absolutely need as adults, and they just don't get a lot of opportunity to develop those with intentionality in a traditional learning environment. So that's our, our totally. collaborate. Thanks for sharing that. That's amazing. And then the last part of our day is called create, and Ashley is going to talk about sort of the K two version of what create looks like. Yeah. So. Create is by far the favorite for my age group. Um, they love it. And we, like I said before, we do Imagination Station. We do um, Picture Study, Composer Study. We've done um, Creative Writing. Um, and for instance, actually, one of um, my students really liked the Picture Study. And so we would actually study um, an artist and then we would have a create project to go along with that and they got to create um, something that looked similar and some of it didn't look so similar but I loved it that the community there that like it was mentioned before there was no judgment and people gave positive feedback and they all loved creating together, even, even if it wasn't a collaborative effort, but sometimes they would create together or give each other ideas. And so create is definitely, um, I, it's personally my favorite part. I get to see, we do lots of hands art as well. And seeing those awesome watercolors that they do, it's just another avenue for letting those kids, um, develop and, um, it's, it's amazing to see that and not hinder that. So that's, that's what create looks like. I love it. We, you know, when you talk, when people talk about the things that they struggle with in school, a lot of parents talk about their kids, like the light going out, like the fire going out, those kinds of things. And it's so fun to see the fire that happens in create. So Tom, my next question is for you. Um, how does Prenda serve students with special learning needs? Yeah, so um, a, a lot of students uh, have special needs where uh, a lot of times parents will, will pursue um, the channels to get that student an IEP or a 504 plan. And then they come to an organization like Prenda and say, how do you support my students' special needs? And my answer was usually, well, every single one of my students has their own individualized education plan and they set it themselves with the help of, of their guide and their parents. And then any additional support tools that, that we need, we have access to those as well. Uh, 
um, but just the different structure of our learning day makes it so that most of my students that had special needs didn't feel like there was anything different about them from the other kids in, in those learning environments. I had a student that transferred into my, my micro school uh, halfway through the year who had been from a very early age in school labeled as a bad kid. He'd been labeled as a behavior problem. Uh, <clears throat> and, and they'd gone through and, and pursued several diagnoses primarily so that the teachers would need to accommodate his, his special needs. Uh, in, in the school he was at before, he found himself uh, being intentionally excluded from student activities by the teacher, by the principal, uh, because they were concerned that if they tried to include him, that he would disrupt the learning for everyone else, to the point that the students in his class had their desks arranged in a circle, all facing the center of the room. And this particular student had his desk separated away from the students, uh, facing the wall, facing a corner. Um, when it was pointed out to the teacher and to the principal that that was a gross violation, not only of this child's IEP, but also of, of state laws in Arizona as pertaining to student isolation, uh, their response was to then take that student's desk and connect it to the educator's desk, facing the teacher away from the rest of the class. Uh, that is such a sad story. Um, that student came into my classroom and uh, you know, the, the different structure of the learning model gave him the flexibility to be himself, to get up and go play in the garden if he wanted to, to get up and go explore and to bring things that he was interested in from home to school. And instead of it being a, uh, no, I'm sorry, we can't do that. We don't have time. We've got a lesson plan. We've got a second. No, it, it, was, it was none of that. It was, that's awesome. What are, you know, I love that you're sharing things that make you excited about learning. And um, within <laughs> about an hour of, of him visiting my class for the first time, this was before he actually enrolled, but within about an hour, uh, his, his mom came over to me and said, I have never seen my son so excited about learning before. Um, and to show you how, how big of a success story this is, uh, I could share a dozen other stories about this student, about how uh, his learning improved, about his own empowerment, and about how uh, his mother seeing this change in him was so converted that she is now a Prenda guide for the coming school year. Um, like, for students with special needs, I can't think of a better environment to address their individualized needs than in a micro school setting. Sometimes that does require additional support and training for our guides, but we are there to deliver that as well. Awesome. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate that. Um, I am going a little rogue and I'm going to ask Ashley a question. Ashley has a daughter that's um, just finished fifth grade named Stella and I just want Ashley to talk a little bit about like where Stella was before Prenda and where Stella was be is because of Prenda. Okay, well that I'm gonna, I might get a little emotional about this. So um, here's my daughter who absolutely loathed school and she was constantly feeling stressed out saying, ah, I can't, I, I study and I study and I'm still getting whatever grade that she was getting. And she was just feeling upset with herself. And as a mom to see that, I was just feeling frustrated and sad for her because the learning experience should not be like this, especially for someone so young. Um, we, then we heard about Prenda and I immediately, we as a family actually sat down and watched the videos and to see the light <laughs> that came into her face just by seeing those videos was amazing. And so I'm like, okay, this is what we're doing. We're going to do this. We're going to move forward. And even that first week 
of going to her micro school was such a change. Before she would come home, throw her backpack on the floor and just say, I hate school. Why are you making me go? To mom, I loved it. And, and there's no homework, but she decided that with all this extra time, she started doing ukulele lessons on her own, watching YouTube videos. She started drawing and it's just a whole 360 for her. And it's been a blessing and we love Prenda for that. And to be able to have that experience for her and have that love of learning sparked and not die off completely from her other experience has been awesome. And I am so grateful for that. So that's, that was my sweet Stella. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Stella is incredible. So Julie, so we serve K-8 students. And one of the questions we get a lot is how will your kids transition when they when they go on to high school and we're new enough that this year this coming fall is sort of our first time that we're, we had some kids transition into junior high and did really well had some really cool success julie i want to talk about your eighth grade daughter who's like what do you anticipate for her having been a prenda student i'm putting julie on the spot with this question she did not know i was going to ask this so but i'd love to know sort of what you're feeling about what that's going to look like for her and maybe what you think it would have looked like without this experience. Well, one of the main reasons why I did Prinda also was to um, help my daughter, who is going to, going to be in eighth grade, um, be able to go into high school with more confidence, with more skills, um, leadership skills, with, um, I don't know, some different character traits that she wasn't getting in the public school because she was just kind of melded, melded into this big pot. And so I feel like from, in my point of view, I feel like it had, we've accomplished that. Um, she, her and another friend were also in my class are both going into high school next year into the same school. And I feel like, um, she's been worried like academically, like, mom, what if I don't know everything? What if I, and I'm, I'm like, I'm not worried about you. I'm not, I'm, I'm just really not worried. I feel like, first of all, you know how to learn. If you don't know the answer, you're going to find a way to find it. Um, you know how to discuss or ask questions to adults and in group settings. Um, you have those leadership skills now that you didn't have before where you maybe might get a little nervous and that's totally fine, but you can debate and have conversations with people that maybe you don't agree with what they're saying, but you don't have to be mean or jerky about it. You can have an, a, a, not a grown up conversation, but a, a conversation where it can be, have a more optimistic outcome. Um, so she's learned, she's, has, she's found her voice and she's found um, confidence that she didn't have before. So again, academic wise, I'm not worried about her. I'm not worried about her emotionally or socially either because I know she can do it. Um, and if she doesn't have the answer, she'll find it. She knows how to find it. Awesome, thank you. I think my favorite thing in all of that you said, which I loved was, in talking to her like you know how to learn like there's so much power in the idea that a child knows actually knows how to learn not knows how to memorize or regurgitate or or play the game of of taking this amount of this content and spitting it out here but actually knowing how to learn i think is one of our most powerful like that's to me is what's powerful in prenda um i'm really grateful for these guides for sharing with us. Um, I'm going to give you each sort of just a, a minute or so, any last minute comments that you have, anything that you're like, I wish the world knew this about Prenda. Um, again, this is unscripted. So, uh, and we're going to start with Tom. Uh, of course, we're going to start with Tom. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's, there's a really powerful video that I, I use, would often share with my students. Um, so I did a, a project in class where we would actually design a business and they would launch their business on, on campus at school for a few days. But some of these students had very real, very awesome ideas for businesses. And I would try to encourage them, you know, don't treat this like another school project. Like, let's make this a real world thing. And, you know, it, part of a, a startup is practicing your pitch to, to investors and I'll bring people in from the VC world and, and have them pitch, you, you can pitch your ideas to them. And everything we did, no matter how much I tried to make that real world, my students always thought of it as just another school project. 
And so it never transferred. Uh, but what we're doing at Prenda, like we go out of our way to incorporate the things that the students do outside of our micro schools as well, so that they, they bridge this gap and realize that learning is not something I do in a certain place at a certain time. Learning is universal. Learning is something that I can do everywhere and probably am doing everywhere, even when I don't realize it. When you look at like, what does a, a child do when they really want to go out of their way to do something difficult or challenging in a video game that they're playing? They're going to go look up tutorials on YouTube, maybe find a gamer magazine, maybe go talk to the guys at, at the gamer store and, and share with their friends. And then they're going to practice, 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 practice until they get it right. And, and we as adults don't look at that as learning, but that is the exact instructional model that's built into Khan Academy, right? That is Khan Academy, uh, which is just one of the many learning tools that, that we, we teach our kids how to use. But even within that, there's different ways to apply it and different ways to use it. Uh, so that's the big thing that I would say is at Prenda, we take this very holistic big picture approach and help kids identify that learning is everywhere in, in everything that they do. And that learning is not like is not separate. It's not something that is happening at school. It's something that is a part of who they are as a person. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Ashley, could, do you have any last minute things that you want to share? You don't have to if there's if nothing's come to you, but I'd love to hear if there has been. Well, actually, I get a lot of friends' interests, especially now with COVID, um, and they always wonder, well. Where the uh, I see that you have math and reading and writing, but where's the science aspect? Where's the history? And um, what I love to tell them is that because it's student led and I'm not just going and feeding off of facts or whatever, um, the kids are genuinely interested. I actually did this really fun Google slide that it just had pictures, it just had pictures, and I asked questions. And they asked questions and it got them going. And actually, um, one of my students decided to go home because he was so interested in like the mode of transportation in the 1750 era. And that got him sparked up in history. So that's the story that I tell them. It's, it's not just kids will be learning no matter what, just like what Tom said. And I love that it's student led. And I love seeing that spark of interest in all sorts of different um subjects but yeah awesome i love that thank you julie we have about one more minute what would you like to add to what anyone that's watching this and wants to know about prenda what what do you want to make sure they know i think i just want to make sure that they know that there's no there's freedom in the prenda model there's no ceiling to what we do we had a cross-country team and one of our at the after school hours and um my kids learned through cross country, through running, because it was hard. A lot of them had never ran before. But our philosophy, I feel like through the whole year in our class was we can do hard things and learning over comfort. So that was also for myself. I feel like I kind of lived in this, this path of uncomfortableness the whole year. And being able to help my students feel that way, feel it feels so good, right? You feel uncomfortable, that's great. Um, it's okay. Uh, and when they're frustrated and when they hate things and they're, they're wanting to quit and give up, uh, the cool part is, is just to be able to help them climb that mountain and help them to get to the top and to see where they've been. That's the cool part of, of Prinda is helping them climb their mountain and the growth that they've, that they've accomplished. That's awesome. I'm glad you mentioned climbing the mountain. We're out of time, but it, at Prenda we talk about climbing the mountain a lot and it's very, very powerful. It's very powerful visual for them at Prenda. Thank you for joining us. Thank, I thank our panel for being here. They're all incredible people. I'm really grateful for them and um, have a great day. <laughs>